Hello everyone. Now, having an old boat like Magic Carpet with a lot of wood on the exterior is a surefire way to make sure that you've always got something to do. And that's especially true for Aladino, who very much enjoys, I think, puttering out there and making our boat beautiful and functional. Now, one of the things which makes our boat beautiful is the teak deck, and it's also one of the things that we have to spend a lot of time maintaining to make sure it doesn't give us problems. So our teak deck is screwed on, which is the more traditional way of installing a teak deck on a boat. Nowadays, teak decks are generally glued on because that reduces the problems of having screws go through your deck, which can lead to water intrusion and a bunch of other nasty surprises. However, having a screwed on teak deck doesn't necessarily mean that you have have to have all the problems associated with it as long as you keep up the maintenance. One of the best ways to keep up the maintenance is making sure that your bungs, which are the round teak screw covers, are uh, installed properly and aren't leaking. That's something that you should, at least once a year if not more, go over and check to make sure that your bungs are still in good order. Okay, without further ado, let's hand this over to Aladino who will show you how to maintain the teak bungs in your deck. It's that time of the year again where we do teak deck maintenance and that consists in checking the bungs, replacing bungs and uh, some already flew out so you see the screws uh, just um, popping out so uh, yeah that's what I'm up to do. It's like a minefield here and you go dig for mines. Generally I just go around with a flat head screwdriver and uh, I poke the bungs on the head if I hear a metallic sound, that means they're tapping against the screw head, which means they are very worn out, so they're worth replacing. Another thing I look for when I bang on them is movement. Uh, that also indicates they are not properly glued in, they don't create a seal, they are worth being taken out too. And another indicator is when you have black discoloration around the bung, that means they're not watertight and water is seeping in, so those also you want to replace them. On this side, this uh, is the worst one, so I see a few black uh, spots here, so those I take out for sure, and then uh, let me start tapping around to show you what I mean. So here is one that moves, So, and here next to it is a good example of one with moisture. So what I do here, I put the screwdriver in the middle and I, well, push it down. Uh, this one is so thin that you heard it break. And what I do, I twist it gently and there you go. And afterwards I poke it from the side so I can get this out too. You want to be careful not to damage the, the teak, obviously. And what you can see here is uh, the epoxy, which after years has become very brittle though, so it's very easy to clean that gap to get the screwdriver in. And there we go. Also I find that when you're working on the bungs, the more vertical you poke at them, it's actually better, because uh, you, you risk slipping less in case it you go at them sideways, I find it's much easier that you slip or that you can scratch and damage the rest. And now let's get to the wet one. Same thing here. I stab it. I try to lift it off. It works pretty good. These are the original screws used and I want to say something about this. So they are flat hat screws and in German you call this a lentil head. It's lightly rounded. Um, I believe it's the same in English. And basically I agree with the flat head because as you can see the epoxy becomes brittle and it's the easiest gap to clear out if ever you need to take them out again, like now. If I would be using Philips or Posey or Torx or anything else which epoxy fills it completely, 
it's gonna be a lot harder to clear that gap uh, to remove the screw in the future. So there is a reason why you should use flat screwdriver in my opinion. But there's one thing I would change and that is the lentil head. The lentil head only takes away space for the bung. Instead if you would take a flat screw you can accommodate more bung into there which uh, fits nicer. Instead on this one it would bounce around sideways. So this is a wet one, right? Yeah. And this is handy actually because it's rained really recently. Yeah. Because you can tell like the ones that have soaked moisture in the teak deck will dry and these will stay wet as you can see right here. So. And mostly uh, the screw still creates a perfect seal but it's uh, the bung itself mm -hmm. which um, yeah as you can see the teak is so brittle and the bung is loose on top and that's where the water seeps in it doesn't necessarily mean that the water went any further but you want to create a seal with the bung so then you have double seal when like with this bung you have a little more meat and it's not as easy then I poke it from the sides and I work towards the middle where there is a gap And worst case, would you damage the, the teak around it? You could put in a 12 millimeter bung. I mean, I have to say, I am incredibly surprised for being a 40 year old teak deck. Uh, there's so much teak left. Um, mm -hmm. I measured it and it still has eight millimeters out of 12, which, yeah, I mean, eight millimeters is not applied nowadays on boats. So, yeah. If we would have the money and the time, my preferred option would have been taking off the whole teak deck and then you run it through a planer and then you install it again floating, which uh, means without screws. So you put a bung everywhere, but which fills the whole plank, no screws, and then you glue it on top. So you have um, a sealed deck forever and you don't need to go uh, around to do this anymore. Yeah, but um, this is the traditional way and uh, that's how we do it now. Now we come to the drilling part. Here's my goodie box when it comes to um, teak deck and bungs. Because you need one of those very specific bung drill bits. I have three 10 mil, 12 mil, 15 mil. Just bought them. I'm very happy. They are expensive, but you need them. And also always keep them in their box. Um, I mean, you do whatever you want, but mm -hmm. I would because you do want them to be accurate. And teak already is a pretty uh, hard wood, which, um, yeah, they lose sharpness. And uh, my old one isn't as accurate anymore, so I got a new one. But I take care of these by always putting them in the box. All right. There's also devices that prevent you from drilling too deep, that you can set up the depth. I do it by eye. Don't drill too deep because otherwise the screw is not going to hold the plank down anymore. The screws can go in right after drilling the holes deeper again. And then I will proceed tomorrow, in our case, with the bungs because it's getting late and yeah, a little squally. You don't want to do epoxy work when it might rain. Also another very popular thing that I heard a lot is many use polyurethane, um, like uh, wood glues, which um, act with moisture and I would recommend against it because yeah there is, is it's a moist environment and you don't want your bungs to pop up as the glue is hardening and foaming if you know what I mean. I would always use epoxy for things like this. So another thing to mention, I will do two things slightly different than learned in a boatyard and when doing this professionally. One is normally you have a bar of wood, you use the drill to make the bunks and then you have them all in one line like this. 
and when you do apply the bunks you hold the whole bar in your hand and you see one is free this is the one I'm using and I use a hammer on top so I place it where I want it I look at the grain so that it flows within the same lines of the wood and then I tap it in place as it goes in it stays stuck and you can break the whole thing off and this is just a, a much quicker method when you as I said professionally it's uh, always about speed and uh, you have to put a lot of these in place so you have them all in one row you go tuck 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 and you also have a nice handle because you do dip them into epoxy and uh, there is less chance of you getting it all over your fingers if you have this little extension that is to say that all the bunks that I have are now loose and they're not within this configuration anymore and that is because it saves me space I don't have to carry these bars around but I have them all here and speed really doesn't matter in this case and the other thing that I want to mention that I will be doing differently here as opposed to in the boatyard I think I'm gonna dip them in epoxy bang them into place and then leave them overnight normally you never do that and to be honest uh, I can't think of the reason besides speed again uh, normally as soon as you have one inside you go at it with the chisel and you make it flat there are some things I don't like about this and um, for example the chisel has fresh epoxy all over the place now in the boatyard you have gloves you have acetone and you can wipe them and you can produce as much trash as you want but now I would rather have them all in place hard until tomorrow and then I can go at it and tomorrow is chiseling day and I just go over the minefield and cut all those heads off and this means that walking on our deck for the next day is literally going to be like a minefield exactly and uh, <laughs> it's good practice because that's how you should walk on a deck anyway like a cat or a <laughs> panther <laughs> all right so it's good practice <laughs> but first I gotta mix some epoxy my syringe here which I only dip into the hardener bucket of course because otherwise it would harden I just find that the hardener in this specific epoxy is uh, way too liquid if I try pouring yeah it's often too much and then I have to overcompensate by making a bigger uh, mix so I find the syringe being a very nice and tidy solution and I use this one whenever I need some more. All right, mix it well and steer in some cotton and ready to go. The cotton adds structure and thickness to the epoxy, otherwise it would be too runny and it also just wouldn't have enough kind of structure when it dries. Aladino also adds teak dust, basically just teak sawdust, uh, and that's just for color. You don't have to add that if you don't want to. I have made my epoxy mix and uh, I do sp like to spread it on a piece of cardboard like this and now it's a little harder because I have to check the orientation but basically dip it in the epoxy and then what I do is I go on the clean piece and I go over it again and that is to create this ring around it but not on the bottom so whenever you take the bung out, the screw head is preferably not filled with epoxy, but it is sealed as it goes in and drives the bung down. Uh, now I don't see the orientation anymore. Yeah, it's difficult to work with these gloves, but it's impossible to find other gloves at the moment. In the time of Corona, they're all yeah. sold out. Oh, I cannot. And you can see there is quite a bit of epoxy around it which uh, all ends up on your chisel and on the parts that fly around and it's uh, messier I find than if I just let it be and wait till tomorrow. So that's what I'm doing in this case. So 
for the next step I'm going to be using the chisel and I don't have a sharpening stone but I still wanted to get it a little sharper. So what I've used is a little bit of wet sandpaper on a piece of, uh, yeah, on a chopping board. This is actually a pretty good trick to uh, sharpen it up every now and then even if you don't have a stone. All right, let's get to the bungs. Uh, the tools I'm using right now to get the bungs flat again are a chisel and my sanding mouse here. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper. It's, uh, it's quite rough, but it will only be to uh, smooth it out a little bit. All right, and now to the chiseling. So you might have seen this many times if you're actually interested in it, but I'm gonna give my two cents about it too. You can use a hammer. I find if you give it a strong enough thwack though, it's not necessary, but um, you can do as you wish. And as you remember, I have letting them cure overnight and that will pose one more challenge today because I do have quite a bit of leftover epoxy forming a donut around the bung as you can see and that is making it a little tougher to chisel out um, as I said I prefer this because it's a little cleaner but I do have a little more effort now because I have to chisel that epoxy away too and be really careful about it all right so flat side of the chisel is facing up in the beginning and I have it resting so that I still have about half bung out and then I to whack it away and that is to determine what way the grain is running as I can see this one broke off that way so I better proceed from this direction now because if I continue this way I may might get might get an uneven bung so that's what I do with all of them in the beginning it's just to determine what way the grain is running and how, how do you actually determine that can you see that this one broke off is higher on my side, but it's lower on yours? Yeah, I hope you can see that in the camera. Yeah. So if I continue this way now, it will break off underneath the level of the deck. And then I have a chisel which goes like into the hole. Uh, sorry, then I have a bung which break, broke off. Instead, if I want it to be level like mm -hmm. this one, I have to continue on this side. Oh, I see. Okay. And you actually also see it in the wood, like you see how clean it is now, kind yeah, of. Yeah. And instead, if I go from this side, then it's... Uh, it would break off funny. It would break off funny, exactly. It doesn't create a nice flat uh, surface like this. Okay. So this one, I will continue from here. And here's the epoxy buildup that I was talking about. So I often make this cutting motion also. It's not just the uncontrolled thwacking at it with the chisel, but it's the cutting. And at the very end, you could go at it flat side down and go over it one more time. Then it becomes really flush. Uh, I skipped that part because the seams are a little proud and I don't want to cut into those. That's why I will just use the sandpaper. And I leave it at that. And you will see, we will have this uh, this patchy looking deck because some areas are sanded and some not, but that uh, evens out pretty quickly and then it will all look good again. I have completed the task of putting in 150 spring bungs into our teak deck and yeah spring maintenance of teak decks is officially over now but i should mention that those bungs they can uh, come to the end of its lifespan at any moment and um, there could be a new screw revealing tomorrow and uh, we'll deal with those later again but the ones that i've done now they will not pop up in for a few years so yeah as you uh, put new ones in, uh, the list gets uh, shorter of the ones you have to replace. 
Okie dokie folks, and that is it for this video. If you found it helpful or if you just enjoyed watching it, then please give us a thumbs up and a subscription and maybe even a comment. We read all of your comments. If you really liked this video and you want to help support more videos like this being made, uh, you can check us out on Patreon. There's weekly bonus articles and videos and updates and stories from us there. And that's really what allows us to keep making these videos every week. And an extra special thank you to the folks whose names are appearing on the screen right now. Uh, they really go above and beyond to make sure these episodes keep happening. When I fall